Então tá, gente, bom dia, obrigado por terem vindo, obrigado, obrigado por estarem aqui em mais uma demonstração, hoje, exclusivamente, às 9 horas da manhã, ah, para poder receber o nosso convidado ah, especial, na verdade ele é um convidado e ele é um anfitrião também, porque ele vai receber a gente lá do outro lado do mundo, tá certo? Então obrigado, gente, essa é a demo livre no estúdio, demo porque sempre tem uma demonstração, a uh, livre é livre, tá? Isso aqui, esse, essa atividade ela é livre. A uh, cada um faz o que deseja. Vocês, como participantes, fazem o que vocês desejarem. O convidado também faz o que ele quiser, né? O que ele programar para nós. Eu também faço o que eu desejar. Não tenho script formado. Uh, algumas vezes eu pinto, trago o um assunto sobre materiais, sobre processo, técnica da aquarela, uh, arte, criatividade o que já se tornou um encontro semanal. Né? Uma brincadeira começou lá em abril e agora a gente está aqui é, quase já chegando em novembro, acredito que vamos até dezembro com essa demo livre toda terça-feira. Ah, o horário é das duas às quatro e hoje especificamente vamos fazer das nove às onze da manhã. Ah, é livre também, gente, porque eu não sou... Ah, aqui as opiniões, ideias, é, são iniciativas minhas, tá? eu não sou ligado a nenhuma escola, associação, aqui não tem nenhuma empresa ligada a, a essa atividade, a, então é uma iniciativa minha como artista, Ari, a, trago aqui assuntos, opiniões que são a, opiniões dos meus, meus pontos de vista, quando eu estou aqui apresentando alguma coisa, e os convidados são sempre amigos meus, a, profissionais que eu cruzo nessa vida artística, gente que faz parte aqui do meu cotidiano, a, faz parte da minha vida, faz parte da minha vida profissional, então eu convido eles em primeiro lugar para estar aqui participando e compartilhando o processo criativo com vocês. É um prazer, gente, para mim, fazer isso, está sendo um prazer enorme, uma coisa muito nova na minha vida, nunca imaginei poder estar tá apresentando, está quase como um apresentador de programa, apresentando esse programa semanal, né, trazendo assuntos, trazendo um, entrevistados, pintando muito, então isso aqui está uma experiência fantástica para mim também. Eu sempre falo que se não, se não for prazeroso, se não for divertido, não vale a pena. Para mim está sendo prazeroso, divertido, adoro compartilhar, adoro estar tá no meio de gente, Adoro estar no meio de vocês. Ah, isso está sendo um prazer enorme, gente. Obrigado por estar aqui. Vamos lá com a minha colinha aqui. Eu vou deixar o chat desligado durante o closed caption ali para vocês poderem ver a legenda, gente. Enquanto isso, ele está ligado ali. Vocês podem trocar ideia e informação. Uma vez que começou o closed caption, a tradução simultânea ali, a tradução, a legenda, eu vou desligar o chat, tá? Para não ficar um, sobrepondo. Vão ter alguns momentos que eu vou parar para a pergunta e aí sim eu abro o chat, e aí a gente pergunta, uh, e aí eu leio as perguntas tá? que a gente vai ter, que vocês vão ter. Vamos fazer uma pré-seleção, a gente não dá para responder tudo. Uh, muita pergunta, muita gente, realmente tem bastante gente nas demos, 250, 300 pessoas. Então, todo mundo perguntando é bastante coisa. Uh, vou pedir desculpa já antecipado para as perguntas que eu não quiser responder, a gente tem algumas principais aqui que a gente quer saber do Herman, tá? Uh, perguntem coisas que não foram faladas ainda uh, e, e assuntos relacionados com o que a gente está vendo agora. Uh, eu vou avisar para quando a gente for fazer a pergunta, certo? Gente, temos aqui pessoal do... Fiz até uma lista do Brasil todo. Tem gente do Uruguai, Paraguai, tem aquarelistas da Argentina, do Chile, do Peru, do México, dos Estados Unidos, Austrália tem aquarelista da Filipinas, da Itália, Portugal, da Espanha, da Rússia, da Turquia, né? tem gente que acorda lá do outro lado do mundo, faz questão de participar, tem dois, três russos que estão sempre aí, eu vejo eles, né? da Índia, Paquistão, da Nova Zelândia, da Alemanha, gente, tem gente do, do mundo todo aqui participando, é um prazer e é incrível ver como essa tecnologia e esse momento nosso agora nos obrigou a estar tá fazendo usando algumas ferramentas que isso se expande, a gente consegue ter alcance. Estou né? dando aula para a gente do mundo todo, assim como vocês estão podendo ter aula também com aquarelistas e artistas do mundo todo. Então, uma época sem precedente, a gente tem muita surpresa vindo para a gente. Nós, como sociedade, estamos nos adaptando a essa nova realidade e a gente vai pegar o gostinho de algumas coisas aí que a gente não vai querer largar mais. Então, é, é isso. Deixa eu ver aqui. Quem que está tentando me ligar? 
Não me liguem, por favor, gente, porque eu estou no meio da demo. Então, é isso daí, gente. Vamos lá. Ah, é um prazer ter vocês aqui. Ah, então, hoje, o que temos ah, na demonstração ah, é um convidado especial, como já falei, que vai ser o nosso... Ah, o nosso vai receber a gente também lá na Alemanha. Ah, eu queria apresentar eles, gente, ele e começar com... Um, ele é o proprietário da, da marca de pincéis da Vinci, uma fábrica que produz pincéis já há muitos anos, vamos conhecer um pouco dessa fábrica, tá? os pincéis que estão aqui agora no Brasil, uh, como é um trabalho intensivo que a gente vem fazendo para tentar trazer essas marcas para cá, né? trazer o famoso PPP para cá, a gente sabe que o PPP é o, os três P's principais para se pintar aquarela, papel, pigmento e pincel, então, nós, aquarelistas, te, tendo um PPP cons, coeso, conciso, profissional, o nosso nível também vai melhorar automaticamente, ter um acesso a material bom, isso é importante para nós, aquarelistas. Então, a estratégia da Da Vinci está sendo trazer os pincéis para cá, tá? trazer os, uma, uma, uma série de pincéis aqui para o Brasil, uh, para a gente poder usar, para a gente poder ter um pincel de qualidade, e a gente vai conhecer um pouco mais dessa fábrica e desse produto hoje, tá certo? Uh, para começar esse assunto, eu queria apresentar para vocês a Érica, a Érica Rossin, que é da Artstick. Ela é representante, na verdade, ela é a perna, o braço da Da Vinci aqui no Brasil. Uh, então, ela vai estar tá aqui com a gente, ela que vai estar tá fazendo o, a tradução simultânea ali no Closed Caption, uh, na legenda. Uh, e ela vai poder falar um pouquinho para a gente aqui, daqui a pouco eu chamo também o Remo para conversar com a gente que já está ali, ó. Uh, então, vamos lá, deixa eu apresentar aqui. Érica, bem-vinda à demonstração, à Demo Livre, tá? Você que está aí com uma perna na Da Vinci no Brasil. Uh, conta um pouquinho para a gente, como é que é isso? Como é que é estar trazendo, tá trazendo esses alemães aqui? Bom dia a todos, bom dia, Ari. Está vendo a microfonia? Desliga o áudio do outro, se tiver Liga, um... Ah, tá, boa. Uh, muito obrigada pelo convite, é uma oportunidade incrível estar falando com esse público aqui da Aquarela. Está dando um pouco de microfonia ainda, acho que precisa desligar tudo aí no outro computador. Deixa o outro, se tiver outro computador desligado, desliga tudo, é melhor. Mas deixa só o... Ok? Tá, acho que sim. Então, pessoal, muito obrigada aí pelo interesse de vocês na Da Vinci, é uma marca incrível. Continua, né? Nossa, pode ser assim. Continua um barulho ruim, né, Ari? Não é? Tá, tá uma microfonia. Mas vamos lá. Tenta falar agora. Vamos lá. Ah, nós entramos com a linha de pincéis da Vinci no Brasil há cerca de um ano atrás. Fizemos um mix especialmente pensado para o Brasil, eles estão disponíveis aqui. A nossa ideia é trazer pincel desse padrão de qualidade uh, para o aparelhista brasileiro, deixar o produto disponível aqui, entender as necessidades, uh, abastecer o mercado que se tornou tão importante para a Da Vinci já. Mesmo com poucos meses de atuação, a gente tem sido muito bem recebido pelo, pelo consumidor, os pincéis têm sido bem aceitos, a gente tem até tido alguns problemas de faltas, principalmente com a pandemia, mas procuramos fazer um mix que atendesse a necessidade do aquarelista brasileiro e para vocês entenderem, é, esse CEO da Da Vinci, o Herman Maia, ele esteve no Brasil antes e analisou o mercado conosco, visitou lojas, viu o que tinha no mercado, procurou trazer o que faltava e essa foi foi o resultado, é, esse mix de produtos que hoje nós estamos oferecendo. Podemos estar sempre incluindo mais, claro, à medida da necessidade e as importações já estão ocorrendo regularmente, às vezes eventuais faltas são corrigidas rapidamente, depende um pouco da disponibilidade na Alemanha, por conta da situação que nós vivemos hoje ainda um pouquinho variável a disponibilidade, por conta mesmo da pandemia, né? esses altos e baixos que a gente está observando em todo lugar. Ali. Então é isso, 
se vocês detectarem falta de pincel e não estiverem encontrando algum tamanho, modelo, família de produto, algum item específico, vocês conseguem nos consultar. A gente teria enorme prazer em mandar link das lojas, ajudando vocês a encontrar o tamanho que vocês não estão encontrando. Facil tentando facilitar, podem mandar DM para o Instagram da Artstick, artstick.brasil. Nesse ah, Instagram legal, a gente responde 100% das consultas. É, isso daí é importante. Coloca ali no chat, por favor, Artstick ah. Brasil, tá? para o pessoal realmente ter isso anotado, porque eu vejo que é, é uma necessidade. Às vezes a pessoa ah, precisa, está precisando do pincel. E eu sempre falo que um depende do outro nesse processo, Érica. O, o, a marca depende do produto, o produto depende do aquarelista, o aquarelista depende do professor, o professor depende do aluno, o aluno depende uhum. da marca, assim, fecha um ciclo. Todos nós nos dependemos mutuamente ah, e todos nós precisamos entender a importância Isso. de estar nesse ciclo. Então, a marca, estando com o pé aqui dentro, né, já é, é um grande passo, né? Uh, e eu queria ressaltar o seguinte, a marca estar dentro do Brasil e investir no país é diferente de ter produto, né? É diferente, porque ter produto tem hoje, mas e amanhã? né? Então, a, a, eu já vi, a, eu pinto e tenho contato com um material importado desde os anos 80, então a maior dificuldade era você conseguir ter o produto é, na, na, na loja Uh, foi, mas era, uma, era um lote específico que durava pouco tempo, e aí aquilo em um mês acabava, e aí você precisava repor, porque você, por exemplo, no caso um pigmento, um pincel estragou, você precisa de outro, não encontrava mais. Então isso é outra coisa importante que eu vejo a marca disposta a ter um, um médio, longo prazo de atuação aqui no, 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 e, 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 e vinda dos produtos, né? porque às vezes o produto ele só vem, aí some, depois não aparece mais, ninguém mais ouve falar. Então, essa continuidade é importante, eu vejo acontecendo isso hoje com marcas grandes, principalmente a da Vinci, como Pincel, fazendo isso. Né? Sim, nós estamos com importações regulares, de forma permanente, o nosso estoque está sendo abastecido regularmente não é nada assim, uma aventura, a vinda da Davi para o Brasil foi definitiva e eu só, nós queremos prestar um bom serviço e, e eu só uh, me coloco realmente à disposição, coloco o nosso time aqui da Artstick à disposição para responder para vocês onde é que tem o pincel que vocês estão procurando dessa forma, ou vocês fazem contato por e-mail, pelo site, pelo Instagram, por telefone, como vocês quiserem, a gente responde 100% das consultas e Qualquer dificuldade de encontrar, a gente quer que vocês fiquem satisfeitos e encontrem. Ó, ótimo. É isso que eu sempre senti falta, Eric. Eu fico... É, é motivo para comemorar, tá? Isso daí é motivo para o aquarelista brasileiro comemorar, ter a marca presente à disposição para realmente tirar dúvida, nos ouvir como aquarelista. Há quanto tempo que eu fiz isso? Marca para ouvir o aquarelista, qual a necessidade do aquarelista. Então, é, olha, não é, é... É com prazer que eu convido vocês aqui na demonstração, já tivemos o papel, já tivemos pigmento, vamos ter muito pela frente ainda, então é com prazer que eu tenho vocês aqui, é uma honra, Érica, obrigado por ter vindo, é vamos lá chamar o nosso, o nosso amigo Herman agora, uh, para ver o que ele tem para nos aprontar. Uh, Érica, fica aí comigo, hein? Fica aí com a okay. gente, vamos lá tocando, vou deixar teu áudio aberto, qualquer coisa você pergunta, participa, uh, estamos juntos, vamos, vamos, vamos ver o que o Herman tem para para apresentar para a gente, para mostrar lá na fábrica. Ah, então, gente, eu conheci o Herman o ano passado, numa viagem para a Itália, encontrei ele, a gente ficou amigo, antes de saber que eu era aquarelista e antes de eu saber que ele vendia pincel, e aí foi assim que aconteceu. Ah, já tem um sangue brasileiro, ah, super acessível, ah, um cara extremamente simples, tá? Eu costumo chamar os, os, os... Eu atendia muito tempo durante meu tempo de publicitário. Eu atendi muito industrial, muito dono de empresa, muito dono de indústria. E essas pessoas são extremamente ligadas com o que está acontecendo. Ficam um pouco tempo no escritório. Estão a maior parte do, do tempo no chão de fábrica, sabendo o que está acontecendo na produção, sabendo o que está acontecendo com as pessoas, como estão os funcionários, os funcionários estão satisfeitos com o trabalho, ele é um desses caras, eu admiro esses caras, porque eles são professores de vida, então é com prazer que eu tenho aqui Herman Mayer. Herman, thank you very much, thank you for coming, let's start to speak in English now, um, I'm gonna turn off the chat, okay?
Let me see here. That Erica can translate everything. There we go. So, um, Herman, good morning for me. Now? Good yes. morning for me. Good afternoon for you. How are you being? Yes, I'm very fine. Thank you very much, Ari. Hello from Nuremberg, Germany. For me, it's already the afternoon. For you, it's still morning. Uh, yes, so yes, we can yes. say Guten Morgen or um, Hello, Guten Tag from Germany. Nice Great. to be with you and with you all together. It's a real Great. pleasure for me. Thank you very much. Herman, it's a big pleasure. It's a big, it's, a, it's, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, we are talking about the, the process of um, a big brand, um, um, uh, a big factory of brush coming to Brazil, and Eka was explaining to us uh, what's the, uh, how this will be the project, and uh, explaining to the, for me um, that we will have always like brush on, on the stores, and how important it is for the, the for us as a water colorist has a good product here. So. Um, I know, let me open your video. So let's start to talk about that, Herman. What do you have for us? I, I mean, like two hours for sure will be a short time uh, to, to say everything about brush, everything uh, about the factory, but, um, and the demo is demo is free demo. You can do whatever you want to, and you can tell us uh, whatever you want, you, you think is important for us. What do you have here um, for us, Herman? Uh, tell about a little bit about your product. I, I can see you have lots of brush in your table. What is that? Yes, yes, paint? Ari. Yeah. You're gonna you, paint I the color I, with me? I prepared, of course, a few things to show, but let me say, you say we are a big brand. Um, we are maybe a big brand, that's true, but we are still a family company. We are not um, a, a huge um, factory. We are about 130 people here making brushes and just brushes. We are about 100 people in the production and about 30 people in administration. And we have been always trying to do specialized watercolor oil color, acrylic color, all kinds of brushes for cosmetics, for makeup artists, for nail nail artists, and of course also for dental laboraticians. This is the main markets we are focusing on, but of course, as the brand name also tells you, Da Vinci, we are a art material brush company. That's what we are since now 1951, if I may put also a little bit of history in the equation. Um, if we really look back, our company was founded around 1890. We do not know exactly because um, all these paperwork and documents, unfortunately, were lost during the war. Wow. Um, it came into the family of the Deffert family in the 30s and was totally destroyed our company during the Second World War in Nuremberg. And uh, so we do not know a lot about this period. Wow. Um, the, the younger son, Mr. Deffert, because our name is Deffert GmbH, Da Vinci Deffert GmbH, and the name of the founder family and the owner family was Deffet, D-E-F-E-T. The younger son, Mr. Deffet, was 17 when he started the business again in 1945 with his mother. Um, the father didn't come back then. And then they started again with two people to build up the heritage and the tradition from before. Um, because Nuremberg always was the center for brush making in Germany. Maybe this is not so much known. Maybe you have never heard that Nuremberg is also the center for pencils in Germany. You have surely heard Baba Castell, which is so big in Brazil and producing in Brazil. Wow. Baba Castell is about two kilometers in oh. this direction. Oh, really? Then you have Lyra pencils, which is about one kilometer in that direction. 
Then you have Stadler pencils with about six kilometers in this direction. And wow. then you have Schwanstabilo, which is about five kilometers in this direction. We'll say mm -hmm. Nuremberg is really a, a, a city for, for drawing and for painting, like the brush factories. Um, the oldest color company was in Nuremberg, founded in the 19th century. And then you have here also the, all the specialists for gilding or gold leaf and so on. But just to give you a little bit of an experience, what is happening in our city here. Wow. Um, this is a paradise. With, it's a paradise. It's not, paradise it's for paradise. artists, if you it's want to put it. Like that. Paradise. Thank yes, you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then um, Mr. Deffert met after the war, a young lady, which was Marianne David, and she was an artist. And then it was a young couple. They were both about 18, 19 years, and they decided we only want to concentrate on watercolor brushes in the beginning, and we want to make the best brushes in the world. This was their dream in the late 40s. And then they also had one, yeah, how do you say, ideal. They had one big um, person they wanted to be as perfect. So they choose the name Da Vinci because this was the person they liked as an artist. That's wow. how the Da Vinci brand came together, which we have protected for our products since 1951. That's a, this, that's a beautiful history, yeah. That's, that's more or less the story behind it. And then it grew and it grew. And uh, in the 80s, we started to do the makeup brushes and then other brushes came. And I had the luck to read. I had the luck to read in the 1985 in a, in a German paper that this couple was looking for a junior partner. I was 26. I just came freshly from the university. I read this ad. And I applied, and this is where I am working now since nearly 35 years. This wow. is my history in the whole company. I have a marketing background, and I have a bookbinding and stationery background because my family had a bookbinding and stationery stationary business since 1872. So also quite a, a long tradition from that side. Wow. And I always liked our product. Brushes are a beautiful product. And um, yeah, that's the history of Da Vinci. And we developed um, more and more to be international and to real specialize. And I think a lot of people think now that we have one of the most amazing assortments in art materials in the world and one of the most professional assortment of art materials in the world, and especially watercolor. This is our, our, yeah, this is our core business in brushes, you can say. Yeah, that's good. Uh, watercolor is growing so fast and uh, without precedence in the in the planet, like as um as as an art expression. Uh, we can see in China people um, just paint watercolors like for many years, for thousands of years, and. Uh, yeah, this is very interesting. And so, how do you do? Um, how do you do uh, to adapt with uh, to different cultures and different uh, artists? And how do you do that? Because like you're selling your brush for all over the the the, 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 the planet, uh, Herman, right? And how do you we do? Are, to, you know, we, how, we are working with about eighty countries in the world. Yeah, that's amazing. And, uh, and of course, every market is a little different, Ari. Every market has its specialities. Every market um, looks for other brushes. But um, in the end, people want the perfect brush for their technique. They want a brush which keeps a lot of water and is not losing, it, not losing it immediately, but it should, the water should be kept in the hair body and should come slowly out of the hair body. And they want a, a nice tip, which is then also having strength enough not to be too weak and 
which is also always trying to get back in its original shape. This is for watercolor oftentimes what people are really looking for. But then of course you have markets where people like more the flat shape or they like more the onion shape or they like more the angle shape. This is very much depending. And then you have markets which, more, which use more, let's say the, the very snappy kind of brush. And then you have countries where you use more the more, let's say soft and full of water kind of brush. But this depends a little bit, but this is, I would say, most watercolor markets are in between these two, two extremes, which I just try to explain. Great. Uh, different artists from different countries, but you mean all of, um, all of them are watercolorists and they are looking for the same thing. Much water, lots of water in the brush, right? Yes, and but yeah. not going out too fast. You know, that not they are losing the color too fast. They are... That, that you can really dose the brush. And then on the other side, you can make long lines without going into the color in the, the color pot again. That's very important. This is almost um, a mission for the, 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 the factory, right? It's almost a mission, a goal, a goal for the factory to, to build a, a brush. Can you say that is a mission for the factory? To... Yes, of course it's a mission because you always try to be to find the best solution, Ari. I mean, that's yeah. what we are here for. We really yeah. want to find the best solution. You can say for every purse, we want to make the best brush in the lower price range. We want to make the best brush in the medium price range. And we want to make the best brush, brush in the higher price range. You always try with the materials you have to find the best solution. This is more or less what you, what you try to find. That's why I love this brush. That's it, because the, the brand and the company and everybody there is like uh, worried about the watercolorist process. That's the most important. Great. I mean, you, have to, you have to see that brush making in our area is still a profession. You have to learn for three years. Wow. There is a, a German apprenticeship system where you have somebody who is going in three months, three weeks into school, theory and and other things, and the rest of the the rest of the of the twelve weeks he's in the factory, and that is how people are trained to be a professional brush maker. Yeah. Uh, you can even do an extra education afterwards. Yeah. It's a small school for the whole of Germany, and maybe the whole uh, class at the moment are six or seven people. You know, two or three of them are from Da Vinci. But it's, it's an old tradition, which we try very much to keep up because um, these handmade processes shouldn't die. And it's very important to keep all these traditions for the future. This is very interesting, Herman. Uh, are they the pincel master? Pincel master is the name of I them? didn't understand what you say, Ari. Uh, how, how do they call them? Hello. Pincel master, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Can you hear me? Herman? Herman? Eu acho que deu algum problema lá. Herman? Now you are gone. Hello. Can you hear me? Herman? Now I hear you again, Ari. You were gone oh. for, a, for a few seconds. Okay, no problem. Um, are they the pincel meister? Meister? This is very well, easy. Well, well, well. After three years, you have the profession name Künstler Pinzel Macher Geselle, which is a very German name. <laughs> and if you, if, you train, if you train another five years, you can call yourself, yourself Künstler Pinzel Macher Meister. Okay. Uh, so this, is a, this is an extra school and an extra training system to be, get a master. And if you have a master or a meister, you are also allowed to open your own factory and you start your own business. That's the old traditional German system. Wow. How many, how many of them do you have work in the factory today? You said we have, we have three meister three, right? okay. and we have about 20 gesellen. 
uh, that we means which have trained three years. And we have at the moment, we have two apprentices which are just at the school, two young girls of 17, 18 years. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, do you think we have a chance to, to meet them today? No, they're working. Yes, like, yes, we try. If we, if we will um, master the technical adventure to get with our equipment now into our factory, I will show you. I will show you how brushes are made. So, Ari, if you if you maybe talk the next three four minutes without asking me something, we try to move from this <laughs> office here to the next office there. All right? Okay, no problem. I can. Uh, I want to see you painting something there, um, Herman. You have lots of brushes on the table and big brushes down uh, on your back there. Next to the wall, I like a long brush, long um, uh, long hairs and long handles. A meter handle, I think, is the, that brush in the back. And it's yeah, you have nice stuff there. So I want to touch everything. <laughs> I want to touch all For of example, these brushes. These, these, are the no, these are no watercolor brushes, Ari, wow. but these are brushes we make for theater painters, which are working on the floor, for example, right? Mm. This is for people who make scenery. So one meter, we have them also with 60 centimeters. But okay. we also make, make varnishing brushes, big, oh my big, God. big brushes with bristle, which okay. are 50 centimeters, 40 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 20 centimeters. But this of course is not for watercolor because how big a watercolor would have to be for for such a for such a painting. Can you Ten imagine? Meters. Ten meters. Ten meters. <laughs> <laughs> Ten meters watercolor, easy. We have, for example, our largest Casaneo brush, a size 40 watercolor brush, which wow. comes in a in a in a metal box like this, for example. That's also beautiful. quite quite a nice big product. Yeah, a nice finishing. And wow. if you want to see a little um, difference, this is the smallest brush we have, a size 20 zero. One hair. It's, it's about 10 hairs. We counted it oh once. My God. Ten um, hairs. Because, and we have only two ladies who are able to make these very, very fine hairs and to get them nicely into the ferrule. Wow, that's very interesting. And this is hair. the most this hair. is the most expensive brush we are producing. This is a size 50 Kolinsky sable hair, Siberian Kolinsky sable hair. Wow. It's a brush which costs several thousand euros, and wow. we can make about four or five pieces a year. Wow. Just to show you Coming to you. Excuse me, Hannah, can you repeat please? What should I repeat, uh, Erika? That's the one. The one, the biggest one is a Series 10 Maestro Kolinsky size 50, which is our most expensive product, which is uh, pure Kolinsky red sable hair, natural hair, the longest hair you can find. And this is, this is only available in relatively small quantities. This is... Uh, this is our Rolls Royce, if you want to put it like this that. This is a Rolls Royce. Yes, a truly Rolls Royce. Let's call it a Mercedes Benz. The, the no, it's, it's more a Rolls Royce. It's not a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is a. But um, you know, we sell them once in a while. It's not like they are not sold. I can't imagine. So, so let me. Should we go now to the production together, Ari? Yes, you can. Do you have something there? Do you have some brush um, with a synthetic hair? I, I'm very interested about that, Herman. Like, what yes, but, but, but Ari, maybe we, maybe we look first how the brushes are yes, made. Sure. Okay. And then we can, we can okay. continue with this. Is this all perfect. right for you? Perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. And I, I want to see you painting with watercolor in this picture. I am I repeat, Ari, I am a brush maker. You are the painter, you know? I am not really as good as you. I know how to make the brushes, but I'm 
I'm not a great watercolorist. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, perfect. Take care of your business and I take care of mine. No, I don't bother you anymore. Okay. <laughs> we say in Germany, Schuster bleibt bei deinen Leisten. Shoemaker, do what you know best. <laughs> uh, we say in Brazil here, uh, cada macaco no seu galho. Each monkey in your like stick, something like that. <laughs> yes. So okay. let's go to the production, okay? Let's go, okay, right. All right, let's go. I keep going with you. Vamos lá, gente, então, para visitar a produção. Deixa eu ver aqui como estão as câmeras. Let me see here. Do you have another camera on? Herman? Wow. Descendo a escada, provavelmente. É isso aí, gente. Então, um, quanta coisa interessante. Érica, você quer compartilhar alguma coisa? Você já teve na fábrica, né? E Sim. muito bacana essa, esses brush makers, esses é, fabricantes. Sim, é. É, eu sempre que virar uma parte do pincel master, é como se ele fosse uma celebridade dentro da fábrica. Só tem três pincel masters dentro da Da Vinci e tem 20 em fase de qualificação. E, e esses pincel masters, eles são líderes de produção, são muito habilidosos, porque tem muita fase manual para eles, né? Alguns pincéis são, auto, são fabricados em máquinas, mas os pincéis, mas o, o Casaneu, por exemplo, os pincéis mais diferenciados da Vinci são ainda feitos, feitos manualmente. Então, você, vocês vão ver na produção agora que tem todo um time nas mesas produzindo e os pincel masters estão lá. E, e é uma equipe com muita mulher também, porque tem bastante gente com muita mulher com, com bastante habilidade manual, é muito legal isso. Uh, e uma, outra, uma coisa que eu queria que vocês observassem é o barulhinho que faz o, a fábrica de pincel. Aí vocês uh, vão ver que a gente provoca o Herman para falar um pouquinho do barulhinho. Hello! Do you hear us again? Yes. Ok, can you see also something? Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we are now in the brush making department and we are we are sitting together here with Julia. Julia is Pintelmacher Meisterin. Nice to meet you, Julia. How are you? So what uh, does Julia do? Julia, Julia is making Casaneo watercolor brushes in the angled shape. The angled shape means it looks like a sword. And the sword shape is a shape which is especially very, very much um, appreciated from urban sketchers, from watercolorists who are um, loving this kind of shape because it can also do very nicely geometric forms and things like that. And it's a fully synthetic brush. It's from our Casaneo fiber, which Maybe I should explain why we choose the name Casa Neo. Casa Neo means typical German, but more Latin, Neo, new, and Casa from Kazan squirrel hair. It's the new Kazan squirrel hair. That means that it's a synthetic squirrel hair. The first one we were really, were really trusting from the very beginning because it's a fiber which is crimped. It's not straight, but it has curves inside, so it can keep a lot of water, and it really gives, has a nice water holding capacity, and has wonderful tips, so you can really, really paint well all kinds of watercolor with this, and all kind of liquid acrylics and things like that. Wow. Yeah, I'm very impressed, Herman. Uh, this is my first time in a uh, brush factory, so I'm loving. This is very nice. Look so you see, Julia is working here only with a little tool for portioning. All the rest is done by hand. She's working on Franconian marble to get the electrostatic away from the hair. And then oh, wow. she is getting the right amount of hair inside a uh, this golden um, brass 
uh, tube, which has also a certain shape already um, so that it really gets into a nice shape. She shows now. You see the yeah. dark thing are the tips uh -huh. and the other side, sorry for the word, are the asses because we say a brush hair has a tip and an ass. And you always have to be careful that the tips are with the tips and the asses are with the asses. <laughs> so now, as you can see, she gets the, the fibers into the ferrule, into the larger end of the ferrule. Mm -hmm. This move looks very easy, but you can try yourself. It's not so easy. Ten years practicing. <laughs> yes. How Ten long are you ago. a brush maker now, Julia? Now for... 23 years? She is 23. doing this job for 23 oh. years. So that's a little experience, I would say. Congratulations. So, Thank you very much. Look at that. Uh, and I now, have, and now she can make with the for hand, she, she makes the right move to get the sword shape. Oh, OK. To spread the, the, the hairs. Inside the, and, uh, the, and the important thing, Ari, what always people would have to learn is a quality brush is never cut into shape with scissors or a knife. A quality shape is always shaped by hand without cutting the tips because the tips of the fiber or the natural hair are the mm -hmm. most important. Oh, okay. I got it. Course, yes. See, brushes are cut into shape. Quality brushes are shaped by hand. That's very important to know. Even even the um, the synthetic ones has different... even the synthetic one. Even there's no difference between the making of a good synthetic one or a good natural hair one. So um, let's let's get to this point a little bit. Uh, you mean the synthetic hair has the same um, uh, the same levels of the natural hair, something like that. The tea, no, the... no, I was talking about the production, Ari. Yes. It always, but... it always depends on what you want. It depends oh, okay. also of the color. Okay. For some acrylic colors, synthetic fibers are better than natural hair. Okay. For some watercolors or some other processes, natural hair is still better than. Uh, synthetic hair, okay. but uh, for example, for the Kolinsky sable, we think there is no real alternative yet in synthetic. But for the squirrel hair, our Casaneo is a very, very good alternative. A very yes. good alternative. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And of course, as I say, um, the more plastic the color, the better plastic or the better solution is a plastic brush, a synthetic brush. Don't, don't, don't understand me wrong with the word plastic, but I just want to push out that acrylic color is also a kind of artificial color, like yes, synthetic hair. Whereas watercolor from natural pigments are still going off mostly or oftentimes better with natural hairs. You know, it depends. Yes. Depends also of the type of color. Okay. So um still in the, the in, in the, the um, synthetic hair uh fiber do you produce the fiber there inside the factory no we are buying different fiber in different diameters and different lengths and then we are mixing these fibers together and the oh, real okay. the real secrets in in brush making is always the preparation of the material besides the knowledge of the worker because um, it's like the Coca-Cola secret, how to mix the fibers, how to mix the diameters and how to mix the lengths so that I get really a nice body and a nice core for my brush. Wow, this is, that, that's very interesting. Um... And the consumer cannot see this from outside. There is a lot of trust and confidence in a brand if you really want a good watercolor brush. Of course, great. Good to know. Yeah, that's it. That's a, a, a very nice thing to learn. Maybe may we follow again um, the, four, the steps in brush making. So you, you see Julia now, she takes the right amount of fiber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She gets all hairs. Oh, all right. Yeah. The then she is comping it out so that there is no hair 
falling out anymore. The right amount of hair and everything. And yeah, then it what... gets into the then it's getting into the into the tube. Uh-huh. Makes the movement. And she then she knocks she knocks it down to the table. Was a little bit too much. And you hear the sound. This is the typical yeah. sound of a brush factory. The knocking down on the stone from the brass tubes. That's very interesting. Yeah, Erica told me that. Before. Now and now she has it in her hands, and you can see here it's all straight. It has no shape yet. It's just flat. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and now she is binding the bundle. No, she's not binding the bundle. She puts it because she's so talented. She puts it directly into the ferrule. Yeah. Julia has to teach you, Herman. Yeah, well, she tried, but I am, <laughs> I am hopeless. You can. <laughs> I am hopeless, Ari. As a brush maker, I, yeah. I would be starving probably. Okay, and then, and then you have the first shape, and now she moves the hair into the right direction. Uh -huh. Yeah, that movement is the secret. And now you have a nice shape. Okay. So when you did when you develop a new a new product so they have to learn how to do this new product too right it's Ari, it's always teamwork because you know we are traveling we get questions but of course then we have also to discuss with our um pincel macher meisterinnen is this theory we talk about or is this really also practicable because oh, okay. i mean you know i mean theory and practice are not always the same wow. You know, so it's always a kind of teamwork within the house to put something together. So she decides more than you what to do, right? <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Maybe in future, but not yet. <laughs> no, it's as I say, it's always a team behind it, and you learn from each other and you try. And you hear also different different opinions of watercolorists yeah. or painters or artists. Professional. And then you then you come to a conclusion. Uh -huh. And, and to be honest, we have about, let's say, 20 brush testers, professional painters, where I have a lot of trust, who then help us with the, with the development of, of these products. Wow. You know? Uh -huh. That's very professional. That's, that's why it's, like, uh, it's important to, to know um, how is the process behind the, the, the professional product. What's make the the big difference? Right? Uh, we have a like, but to learn and to know how it how is the process to make it. What yeah. is on another level? You know, this is very important. But you but, see, the brush maker normally is only doing then the hair into the fiber. Of course, there has to get glue also made inside to glue then the fiber into the metal ferrule. I should not forget to mention this. This is not only kept just by crimping the, the metal ferrule together. It will also be glued afterwards uh -huh. with a special two-component glue, which um, glues the fiber in itself and glues it also into the ferrule. And then goes to the handle. And then the handle is made and, and pressed and so on. But this is now a little bit too far. This is a little bit too difficult to do this uh, with a tablet in the hand, I would say. Uh, OK. No problem. So yeah. this, is, this is the brush number one, which I wanted to show you. And uh -huh. if you don't mind, let's go to the brush number two, which I wanted to show you, OK? Yeah, now I'm the inviting one. You can. So Julia, say goodbye to. Bye. To everybody oh, yeah. there. Bye, thank you. By the way, this is all different kinds of shapes which are made by hand in our factory. If you look at all this assortment here.
the cosmetic ones. So cosmetic ones, watercolor ones. Dental we produce stuff. about 12,000 different brushes. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot, look. Wow, it is beautiful. Yeah, I can see those nail and cosmetic ones. Those yes. in me. Those in me. It's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, so, and now we are at the next table here. And, um, Now we will be seeing a Casaneo wash brush, how it's made. Oh, yeah. The difference between a ferrule brush and a wash brush is that it's having no metal ferrule, pretty easy. <laughs> so it has a lot of steps. This is the traditional making and especially the, especially the last 10, 15 years, these traditional brushes have found so many friends again because of their kind of making. We produce so many more than about 10 years ago because people all over the world love these kind of brushes very, very much. Yeah, that's true. So there is a lot of steps in, in to make these brushes. And uh, let's, let's show you first before we go to Anita who is making these brushes, the single steps of the whole thing here. You have here the fiber which is um, prepared in the different mixtures. Then we have to make a bundle with one cotton string. Then we have a second cotton string, which keeps the hair together. Wow. Then, we, then we cut the end to get to this part, which is then more or less put onto the handle. Then there is a uh, a little rubber protection for the handle to avoid the water going into the wood. This is the transparent tube. This is the bundle. And then we bind everything together with a metal string. And then it will be starched and get to the final shape. And this extra fine tip you can see here. So all in all, it's a lot of handmade process which goes into these brushes. By another pencil master. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no, let's go amazing. over there and to see what Anita is doing here. Want you my winkel? My wasta mal nach Brasilien und mal winken. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. Das muss ich was reden. Hello. Hello. Hello, Anita, how are you? She's, I think she's a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's, yeah, she's a little nervous. bit nervous. Mm -hmm. But okay. um, I think she has even more experience than uh, Julia. How long, how, wie lange machen Sie schon Pinsel? She is brush maker for 28 years, mm -hmm. Ari. Wow. That's so. It's a little bit difficult, it's a little bit similar also from, from the process. And on the other side, for us, it's totally different. But I will explain again. She has the same kind of, of portioning machine. Uh -huh. Exactly the same, but different measuring, right? Measure, yes. She combs the fiber again. She's also working on a marble plate. And she has, she has two boxes. And if, if we look now, the second brass, this is the first brass tube where she, where she pushes down. And now she has the second one where she pushes to the, pushes to the tips. And you can see that the, the tube itself inside has a shape because you see here the mirror yeah. that there is already a first shape in the brush. And then wow. she she takes the cotton string, makes the typical brush makers knot, and now she can make the fine tip. And the more she turns, the more pointed the brush gets, and the less she turns, the more flat or oval the brush remains. 
And of course, the secret is also that every brush has the same shape because every consumer want, if he buys the brush again, the same shape that he had last time. So she has to be very careful and concentrated to get the same tip for every brush. I hope you can, I hope you can see a little bit there and it's not too dark. I don't know whether the light is okay. Yeah, it's fine, it's no problem. She's holding all the, 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 the new ones in her neck. That's interesting. Yes, she has, she has she it does, there. She, she, she the has all time. the bundles in the end. It's maybe a string with 10, 15 different bundles. Uh-huh. That's very interesting. Yeah, and hard to, almost impossible to follow her. With her hand. Yes. These are very, very, a lot of routine in the, in the handling processes in the single steps she's, she is having here. Yeah, the so how do you, how they divide the, the numbers? So do you have in the production, of course, like the demand, right? The we have, have another production settle up there irgendwo. You see, every worker has a production order where you have what material to use, what is the what is the the, the visible hair length, okay. what is the weight of the hair, how the brush should be stamped, the barcode for every production process. Everything is organized that way. So okay. um, this is follow. all. This all has to be all following the same routine, so that we are always producing the same kind of brush in the same kind of measurements and diameters. There we go, yes. Same measure, the same everything. This is very interesting. I'm very excited about it. If you, if, you, if you look at our YouTube channel, there is also videos with a whole tour to our factory and uh, how the brushes are made and so on. You can, you can see also little clips which explain this also quite nicely. Hello? Yes. I'm here and watching her. Very impressed. Yeah. See? One, two, three, four. So if we... If we want to show you a little bit more. Esse é o famoso barulho do pincel, Erika, que você yeah, fala. We are following uh -huh. the... Imagina várias uh, especialistas aí, vários brush makers, fazendo esse barulhinho na mesa, chega uma hora assim que... que que gera quase uma musiquinha, e é, é tranquilo, elas trabalham concentradas, assim, processo muito manual de muita habilidade, extrema habilidade, né, e é muito legal de ver, admirável. So, I, I told you about the, about the viewing process, this is Nelly, and Nelly is viewing how are you, Nelly? She, she is so now afraid. doing the brush heads from the back side and always putting the right amount of glue into the, wow. into the, into the ferrule. That's the 10, the, the 10 hairs one now? No, this is a size one or a size two. Oh, okay. A little bit bigger. Oh, wow. And she, yeah. she has the to be very amount. careful. If she has too much glue, the glue is running out and destroying the brush. If she has not enough glue, there is hair coming out. So she has to be very, very careful with what she is doing. And she needs very, very calm and secure hands because yeah. otherwise her hands are gluing together and she cannot um, go home in the evening because she is not, <laughs> she cannot free her hands. This was a joke, sorry. A meditation. So, Nelly, uh, how long are you doing this brush? 
wie lange Sie diese Arbeit schon machen. Oh. She is 20 years with us. Okay. 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 We are just just one more to show you. When you buy brushes in the shop, you always have them starched. That means they have gum arabic in the hair, which makes them stiff and which protects the brushes uh, during the transport. Um, you can see here different kind of, of little soups, as we say, because depending on the hair, you have different kind of, of starching, you, which she is getting into the fiber and into mm -hmm. the sable hair so that it looks like it is wet. But in reality, it's um, just a little kind of gum arabic put into the hair so that it gets the original shape and so that it's perfect and securely, uh, securely for the transport. The kind of, um, the kind of soap, is it? Is the same soap it's, that you use? It's, 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 um, it's some erratic, you know, which is also in a lot of a binder in the, in the watercolors. I can show okay. you the kind of material yeah. which we are using. Okay, you melt you them, see? You melt them and, yeah. And then if you if you wash them out before using in in uh, in the water, then everything is fine. Okay. Wow, that that was amazing, Herman. Um, this um, this brush um. This brush maker. We are walking again. Ari, sorry. Okay. No problem. Erika, você visitou toda essa toda essa área, né? Sim, sim. Just to just to show you. Okay. Just to show you also because we are we are talking about master. If you are trying to do your your master degree you also have to make a sign or a kind of artwork what brushes you can do so this is for example a, a little decoration which was made by by mr hofbeck who a brush making master who worked in da vinci for over 20 years this is the gentleman here he he died some years ago and his this was his masterpiece Wow. Because with all the different brushes he made, fan brushes, flat oil brushes, one stroke brushes, oil color brushes, filbert shape and round, ceramic porcelain brushes, watercolor brushes, and again, China painting brushes. So that's a part of our assortment all in one board. And this is maybe a good sign of what a perfect brush maker has to have as capacity to make when he is really a master. Wow, that's amazing, Herman. Look at that. Mm -hmm. The watercolor. Just to show one? you. Okay. The watercolor oh, brushes, the onion shape, the flat shape, yeah. the one stroke for 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 all different kinds of uh, let's say sign painting. Uh -huh. So, and for ceramic and china painting. Ceramic and china, okay. Yeah. The ceramic ones, like, looks like flat on the tip or... They are, they are flat or they are angled. Oh, okay. So, it's... These are brushes which are very specialized for, yeah, the ceramic people we know in, uh, in Italy or in Portugal, where we still sell a lot of these brushes. There is only certain markets which are still asking for that kind of brushes. Yeah, they can imagine. Wow, that's amazing. And if, wow. you, if you walk through through our company, you always find also a lot of art because Mr. and Mrs. Stefan, as I said, were artists. They always had a gallery for modern art. So we all, all have the luck 
that we work more or less in a gallery. Every office has has very nice pieces of art, and that's of course related to our business because we learn from the artists and we want to give back to the artists. That's why we are living more or less together with artists. We need the input, and we also um, try very much also to to have always interesting pieces on art, of art in our in our offices wow yeah we thank you <laughs> we are talking muito bonito isso é muito bonito isso que ele falou agora é muito bonito ali o respeito né o respeito temos com os artistas e temos que retribuir vocês pegaram essa parte sim é o que eu estava falando sobre ter uma marca comprometida e como é a diferença de uma marca comprometida com, com quem faz. Isso daí em qualquer área, em qualquer segmento, não só nós, artistas, e no ramo da arte. Ah, como faz a diferença um produto que realmente é fabricado e preocupado com quem está usando lá no, no, no final, não é só lucro. Ah, ninguém se fala, nos fala em lucro, nos fala em vender para ter sucesso, é para realmente sanar a necessidade do artista, de quem usa. né? Então... Great, Herman. That was a nice ride through your your factory, and people are very excited. I think uh, we we could like see if somebody has some questions. What do you think? Yes, of course. Here we are. I mean, we this was only a little little tour. We could make this, of course, in much more detail, and um, yeah, prepare this more professionally. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, life is life, and. If you come to Nuremberg and you are interested, let us know. Maybe we find a way to show you around our factory. Um, we are not a museum. We are a real factory. But um, I know that a lot of people are always interested to see uh, what is happening out under our roofs. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm planning next year. Let's see how things is going Like uh, with all this, you know, um, Uh, quarantine and stuff, and but I, I'm I'm planning to do to do that next year. So it'll be a pleasure and to meet you there, and let's plan that. So let's see. No, no, what, you are most welcome, Ari. Most welcome. Yeah, for sure, and even um, we are waiting for you here too again because like you you have been before, but yeah, we had the, some plans for this year, but next. Yes, next time. the plan. Everything was done. Everything was bought, but unfortunately was not going it was not possible to come to brazil again this year yeah okay. so hopefully hopefully we can forget all this virus until next year and then it's yeah. a new it's a new era again or yeah. back to the old era again let's put yeah, it like that we are, we are here waiting Thank for you oh uh, herman let me ask you let me ask you something people have some questions here and erica do you have any any questions you want to do It's just a question I've just read, Herman. How many brushes can a pencil master do for a day? Quantos pincéis o, o, o pincel, o mestre de pincéis pode fazer por dia? Give us an example. This, is, um exemplo. this is a question I get quite often and I can un also understand. You have seen that we are working here, um, how can I say, in, in, in different product steps. The brush maker is responsible for putting the hair in the right shape into the ferrule. In other factories, the brush maker makes this work, but also stamps the handle, glues, crimps. This is how not we are organized. We are organized that the brush maker should do what he's best at, is is bringing the hair perfectly in the ferrule. And for example, From the brush um, Julia was doing today with a size 14, I think she can make about 250 brush heads a day. Before gluing and before stamping, just putting the fiber into the ferrule. Is this helping you? From a smaller size, she can maybe do 400. But only bringing the hair into the ferrule, not counting the gluing the stamping, the pressing of the, or the combination of handle and ferrule, the starching, and yeah. so on, and so on, and so on. That makes sense. That makes lots of sense, of course, yeah. 
and depends on the, the model too, right? It um, depends on the model, how difficult the model mm -hmm. is. It depends on the size. Um, you can say that the smallest and the larger sizes take more time. The medium mm -hmm. sizes between zero and six, let's say, are the more easier in that direction quantity-wise. Yeah. We had lots, lots of learning from you, Hermo. You, you had to, to learn lots of things from you. And thank you for the question. It makes me like think a lot. And yeah. Uh, Erika, do you have another question you saw here on the, the, the chat or? Uh, does DaVinci have any partnership with other brands like uh, PPP? So this is becoming more popular in Brazil, Herman, because we have just brought the inspiration made in Germany kit. I will say in Portuguese now. Tem uma pergunta sobre as parcerias com as marcas e é o que nós acredito, acredito que é o que nós acabamos de trazer para o Brasil, o kit Inspiration Made in Germany. Você pode falar um pouquinho sobre o kit, Herman? Can you talk a little bit about the kit Inspiration Made in Germany, please? The partnership well, between the three brands? The kit Inspiration Made in Germany is that product I have here, the travel brush. You should know that... Um, well, Germany, sometimes we are a little bit different than other people. There is a market difference in a way that in Germany, the three brands, the leading brands in brushes, in paper, and in colors are specialists. That means that we are only making brushes. Our friends from Schminky, Schminky Colors in Düsseldorf, are only making paints. And Hanne Mühle, which you know very well, Erika, is the oldest paper mill in Germany. These are three independent companies, but we work a lot together in terms of distribution, in terms of marketing. And we have developed this inspiration made, of German, made in Germany, um, yeah, trio, where the colors and the travel brush and the paper are all in one set together with the same design and give a perfect combination. And this is something which um, we want to extend also in future um, because everybody of us thinks we are, as I said before, we should do what we know best, like Schminke colors, Hanemühle paper, and Da Vinci brushes. This is, this is our aim and this is what we try to follow. Yeah, this is a perfect com combination, Herman, because like uh, the three piece that we call here in Brazil, we call them, we call this trio a three piece, PPP, um, uh, paper, pigment, and brush. And ah, exactly, PPP, ah, wonderful. PPP. Yeah, the trio PPP, they are the most important materials for water quality. So uh, one depends on another, so uh, we need, the three peels to paint and waterfall. You want to go out to paint, grab your PPP and, you know, go painting. Uh, that's the, 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 the philosophy here about the PPP. So when we got very happy when this uh, project, this PPP kit project came to us because the first time uh, we have a consistent and a very professional trio uh, to work with. So uh, we, uh, Brazilian watercolorists, thank you a lot about that. And this is a, a, a very important step for us here in the country. Yes, so. I mean, I mean that our travel brush looks maybe not the most elegant from the very beginning, but it has so many advantages because most travel brushes are just put together and yeah. they are not really yeah. combined. Yeah, and for us, true. it is very important that the handle is really screwed into the brush head yeah, so that you are not having a wobbling thing in the back, but you have really a fixed handle in the back. Yeah. And on the other side, you can put the brush head into the uh, tube. So also this is fixed. And here also the brush has air, fresh air to breathe. And you are not getting any kind of little mushrooms on the hair if you are not opening it or something like that. 
So this is a perfectly thought through travel brush, which has been proven to work very well since 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, and this, okay. That was the first this, thing I, I, yeah, see? And this uh -huh. is just to show you how flexible it reacts, how it comes back, how it makes a nice tip, whatever you want with this, it can really dance on the paper. As I said, I am not a painter, but at least I try to know what a nice brush should be. Yeah, and you can awesome. see here also how nicely it comes to a point and how quickly it reacts. Yeah, for me as an artist, Herman, uh, the brush is the last frontier from what you like plan, what you want to as a painting, and is the last frontier to um, uh, properly um, materialize that idea. You know what I mean? Like the brush is the last frontier from your, your body to the painting. So uh, it's very important to respond it, to what you think. It's getting your fantasy through the arm into the brush. Exactly. It yeah. should be the, it should be the, how we say in Germany, the verlängerte Fantasie des Künstlers. <laughs> um, that's not easy for me to translate into right. English, but it's, it's going directly from your hand into that and it should do what the brain wants, exactly. <laughs> like, a, like another finger, like another uh, arm. Yes, yes, yes. It has yes. to be part of you. The brush has to be part of you. That has, the hair has, has to respond what you plan it. Uh, you know, uh, that's, very, yes. that's very important. What, what, what Julia made, you know, the first yes. brush maker, she yeah, made yeah. this angled shape. So this is now a, a, a starched brush, how it would arrive Ooh. in the shop. And now if I, if I put it into the water, we have to get rid of the, of the starching. So we, we open it up, let it, let it inside a little bit so, that it, can, so that it can really open up. Yeah. And now it's, you can work with this very geometrical, but you can work with this also pointed. You can make very nice little strokes. You can get fatter and you get can thin again and you can make yeah. washes. It's, it's a very nice, a very nice shape and it's getting more and more popular. As yeah. you can see, you can really make interesting, interesting moves with that kind of brush. Yeah, this kind of brush is very, um, it's very, you can use for anything, kind of, you can use for anything in watercolor. You can make also very, very a, a nice little face, whatever, you know, no problem with this. And on the other side, on the other side, we saw the wash brush SAS4, the, the traditional wash brush, which of course, takes a huge amount of water. You can really put it into water and you can see how the water stays in the brush body. And only then if you put it like that, you can see how much water is still inside. And so this is exactly what you expect from a, from a squirrel hair brush. And on the other side, if you just do it like that, it comes back to a nice tip immediately and you can make washes, you can make strokes, you can make things in all directions. But Ari, you are the painter. You know this much better than myself, what to do with these single brushes. You know why you are doing a very uh, nice job painting this paper. I'm loving this art. Very good. <laughs> but this will be gone in two minutes because this is magic paper. This is a mm. paper I discovered in Japan, which the Japanese pupils get to learn the calligraphy. So in five minutes, it will be all gone, and then we can use it <laughs> again. So this is an art which is vanishing. So don't don't think about what I have done here for the for this second. Yeah, that's great, Herman. This is very nice. So in the flat one, the rigger people here like look looks uh, for the rigger a lot. They love the, the rigger. rigger and... um, well, I have here the liner. I think I, I didn't even. Did you ever see the liner? Okay. This is a liner with a, which we call linear or 
tank pencil or the traditional fountain pen of 200 years ago. You have here a, a brush in the middle, which gets, of course, the water and the tank and the color from the Casaneo here. So this is artificial sable hair and this is artificial synthetic hair. This is two brushes mm -hmm. in one. Yes. And of course, you can make very long lines. You can write, you can do calligraphy, you can do grasses, you can do puff. You can do um, all kinds of flowers with that kind of, of special brush. Oh, this is also, also a, very, a very nice brush because you see then that the tip is always getting new water and things from the back, from the support uh, of the Casaneo hair. Yes. And then you can, of course, write names, make signatures. You are very flexible. Yes. Uh, another good thing on the brush that I, I always say to my students is, uh, when you are painting watercolor, uh, you, you, you have to avoid to break the process of the, the, the brush uh, marks, the brush movement. So uh, anytime you go to the palette and get back to the painting, you break the process of the brush stroke. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. I know exactly what you mean. See, when you have a brush that holds lots of water, lots of paint, you don't break the process. You just go through and forget about to get back to the, 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 the palette and get more, more, um, uh, more uh, paint. And that make your um, painting more professional, more fresh. That's so important, Herman. You know better than me about that. Maybe you like you hear from too many artists saying about that, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of artists always like now also the mottlers or the white brushes. This is something also we are selling more and more in the last in the last um, years, and we have developed. I think we are the only company also a very special production process because we combine the fiber the glue and mm -hmm. the handle with a special system called Duro Plus, which is, as you see, a special handle cut, which yeah. is dipped into the glue and the fiber is dipped into the same system. And I, what you see is now a cut open ferrule because these are things the consumer cannot see from outside. But yeah. oftentimes the painters are tired in the evening and they leave the brush in water. Yeah, and of course, great. the brush is taking oh. the water and the yeah. ferrule works. And the next morning, the, the ferrule has burst Go and the over. brush is not nice anymore. And yeah. with this kind of making and with this kind of quality, you have a much more long lasting product. And uh, we are quite known, especially for our spin series 5080, which is, um, also very nice to see that the water more or less goes in from alone oh, yeah, yeah, because of it. the capillarity. Can uh -huh. you can you see? Yeah, 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 and yeah. if you if you make then um, the brush full of water, it builds a beautiful painting edge, which yeah. is really really nice. And wow. you can do you can do washes, you can do flats, you can do a lot of nice things, and you can see how flexible these brushes are. Of course, these are straight fibers. This is more elastic, but with Casaneo, you have even, you have even more um, flexibility. The, no, more water holding capacity because of the crimp fibers. So if you even look, the straight fibers are thinner and yes. whereas the Casaneo fibers have a thicker belly because yes. of the of the special shape of the fibers. Moves more water. And uh, if, if then you can also see how flexible and how long you can do a brush stroke without mm -hmm. going to the water again. I yeah. mean, yeah. this is what you can try. And, yeah. uh, and this is of course, if you have just one fiber and a straight fiber, you will have to go to the water pond, a pot much more early than with a tool like this.
which That's makes amazing. also a beautiful painting edge. Yeah. Um, this kind of brush um, in the 80s, we couldn't even imagine a brush like that, doing, like, doing things like that with an um, artificial, with a synthetic hair. So in 20 years ago, 15 years ago, just uh, natural hair could do that. Yes, but, but now the things are developing and uh, there is, we are checking a lot of different fibers which come in and 95% we are sending back, <laughs> but there are certain fibers we fall in love with, which we are really then using to develop new mixtures and to develop new kind of brushes. Yeah. Is it a trend to use, uh, to make brush with um, synthetic? What do you think about that? Uh, to... Well, it's, this is a kind of, of philosophy, you know? I mean, how a lot of people try to have a vegan lifestyle. A lot of people want to avoid natural hair. So yeah. they prefer synthetic fibers. On the other hand, of course, synthetic fiber is made from crude oil. You need a lot of energy to make the synthetic fiber. And in the end, it never goes away. So everybody has to decide for himself whether he likes better synthetic hair or natural material. This is a, this is a philosophy people have to decide for themselves. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's not my, it's not my profession to tell people to use that or to use something else. Yeah, OK. So this is good. Herman, uh, Erika, do you have any questions? Do you want to ask something to um, Herman? I'm very like impressed with all these brush and all these things. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the brush that's coming to Brazil? How do you choose this brush? All, and... all the brushes we showed until now are available in Brazil. I uh, This is, when we started with Aria, Erika together, we wanted to, to try to bring in material which is um, new in a way which is different from what we have seen, which is also more or less um, um, against this, this um, additioning to the assortment you have already in Brazil uh, in your shops because I think it, it, we didn't want to bring the same brush you already have there so we tried a lot to bring a different interesting assortment like brushes we like our vario tip for example which is a, a, a thicker and a thinner fiber together and which you, with which you can perfectly paint parallel lines. You wow. see, wow. This, is, this is something which is amazing. You can do fences, you can do, you can do hairs very easily, you can make grass very easily. This is something which we have been getting also a design prize for because it's, it's really working so well for many, many techniques. Yeah. Over. We, we last year we got also uh, in Frankfurt an award for our Vario effect. This is the Vario tip. The Vario effect is a brush which when I put it into water, you have more or less twenty brushes in one, as you wow. see. Yeah. And then you can do also nice circles. You can do very very nice effects, which yeah. you cost would you cost you hours if you do this with one little with one little brush. And here you can do this pretty easily, very very quickly. Yes, you can use in a different techniques too. Huh? You can use. Yes, you can you can yeah. you can use. And I mean, these are of course a little bit of toys, but they also can give for some techniques a very very good service. Yeah, you know, right. and uh, I think we are the only ones in the world who have a technique to to have all these little brush into one big brush. And it has uh, two different two different hairs to huh? two different. Yes, but we didn't show you because we cannot show you all our secrets. Yeah. <laughs> oh come on! Come on! Come on! I want to see that next year. 
So yes, all right. <laughs> what is your secret? <laughs> so, Erica, um, do you have any another, questions? Another idea which um, which comes traditionally from from uh, the marbling or from the background of imitating wood or imitating marble, oh, okay. and is is the one with the set six or eight different um, brushes. And now I think my glass is even too small here. Uh, I have a problem with this, but I can take a little water from here. And then you can make also very, very nice effects if you use a brush like this, you know. This was, this was a tip and, a, and an idea from a, from a Swiss watercolor painter who made Japanese gardens. And he said, if he's using this, He's about 10 times quicker than if he's using one brush only. Of so course. these are all ideas we get also from artists, which we check and where we then say, oh, that's a great idea. This could be a nice, could be a nice product idea, for example. Yes, there you go. One, two, three, eight, eight brushes in one. Eight brushes in one, exactly. Originally with, with, with um, um, hawk bristle hair, this was used to make the graining into the wood, if you imitate um, certain woods like birch wood or beech wood or something like that. Yes, there is a good thing for um, Eastern painters. Yeah. They love yes, I mean, if you you know that in the 17th, 18th century, people here, especially in our area, they couldn't afford the expensive marble from Italy. So they invented a lot of brushes, <coughs> which helped them to imitate four finishes to make wood and to really make it look like marble. That's and a lot of these brushes were originally invented to do that job. Cool, great, all the lines, beautiful. So just a little, just a little sidestep. <laughs> Herman, wow, I'm very impressed. The time's flying. It's 20 to 11. I told you two hours um, could be like um, a little time. Time flies when you're doing like a nice thing. Um, do you have something else? To Ari, Ari I, was, I have now a question to you because I was now talking uh, like a brush maker. What is a painter really expecting from a good brush? What is your expectation? What do you really need and want if you buy a brush? Yeah, you, you got the point. I think for watercolories, uh, we have the same rule to follow. And an important thing for a brush is to hold uh, enough, enough paint, enough watercolor um, to paint once without go and go forward and back to the, like to the, the, the palette. That's most important. And for my kind of my style, I like the ones who do, uh, it does that. And I like the ones firmly with a um, uh, straight point and synthetic uh, to do like a brush strokes. I like to show the brush strokes in my, in my work, my watercolor, like here on the back. I need a big ones and a big brush to do that kind of sky. Can you see that in, the, in my back here, in my, my camera? Well, I have to look at the monitor now. Yes, I can see, yeah. yeah. There you go. See, see on the back, I need a kind of one specific brush to do that, that sky and a smooth sky and a smooth um, water marks and water. Um, is the sky, is the sky made with a wash brush? Yeah, 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 yeah. I need a one to. I need a kind of brush to do that. Then the ones who like it holds lots of water in it. And yes. A, yes, and I need a firm, um, <laughs> uh, synthetic brush to do that brush strokes, like on the trees and as in the, the um the same in the in the, in the poles in the, in the light poles and the wires and fly and birds and everything. So I use two specific kind of brush all the time. I just changed the, the size, uh, depending on the size of the watercolor, but um, I need just two kind of brush all the time. Okay. Let me put your spotlight here too. So okay. then um, we have some rules to follow to paint watercolor too. I use like 
the different um, levels of the, the, the hair, the point, the, the main hair, and the back, we can change and mix colors at the same time. And yeah, we, we will have the opportunity to paint together, to paint something there in the factory, and I show you personally. I can All even right. show something here. I can paint something. Do you want to see a little bit from from me uh, here? I can show you something on the practical prax, practical paint, mixing some colors, and I can show you how show, show how how I use the, the the brush. Do you want to see here? Yeah, why not? If it's if yeah. it's possible. Okay, I'll show you right now. Let me change the the camera the camera here. And I'll show you right now. Give me one second, and there we go. Can you see me here? I just changed the. Um, So let me show you, Herman. It's better than just to explain. I have here the trio. Yes. And So I use um, primarily two kinds of brush. One that holds lots of water in it, yes. and another one like the Nova, like the Nova um, yeah. that has a different kind of uh, elasticity. Um, yes, more more flexible. Yes. To do a big wash like this. And you don't have to go back and forth too many times. You can go just once and do everything. Mix the colors and long and big brush strokes like this. Holds lots, lots of water. There we go to do the sky, for example. Yeah. So to mix the colors to for the mixing, it's perfect. A brush like that because I knew number yeah. four for this size, and I use eight or 10, 12 for the, the biggest size, right? The biggest size, so, yes. Yes, and this one here is for the, when I, I need to um, I need to describe more the things on the watercolors, on, on, on my painting like this. When I had to do like um, a person, I had to do with this kind of brush, like somebody walking on the street or carry on like a suitcase or whatever. When I need some um, more figurative thing, when I yes, need- Yes, 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 yes. Of course you need a pointed brush, that's clear. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely clear. And as a watercolorist, I had to wait to get dry you know, to put like on the top of these things and all this magic just goes through. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So a big challenge for us too is to hold um, a brush to hold lots of water and brush to hold lots of pigment with less water. Otherwise uh, you have just one tone, just one, um, we need like a very, um, let me show you here. You need to go from the light tones like this here, right? To the um, dark and strong tones like this one here. Yes. So it's hard, it's hard to get this kind of tone, the dark ones 
with a brush that holds lots of water. So you need to work with both with both all the time. Yes, and, absolutely. And this one here too is hard to make like a big strokes with light tones, right? Because like it doesn't hold too much too too much water. So um, we need one need another one. Uh, uh, they they I had always to they work. They are the perfect them. team together. Yeah. Yeah, they're like a, a, a beautiful couple. So, I mean, and yes. then, are you the, the perfect couple. One does with what another doesn't do it. So, and yeah, I love this brush here too, this Casanil um, um, number 12, Herman. I like to use it a lot. Uh, for me as a watercolorist, what I like most is the long hair. It has like a, a long yeah. hair and it's so flexible. Like, if you want to make like um, a circle, you just press the, 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 the brush on the paper and, you know, squeeze and just go around. And all let me show things. you here another thing, Herman. This is very interesting. So with a brush like that, I can actually use through two or three different colors in the same brush. And that makes like a very nice um, fusion. Okay. Let me show you here. Things like that. I use like um, the hair. The so most times is like this, right? And I divide in three different um, three different parts, parts steps. Yeah, I use the seed for one thing. Yes, I use the like the middle for another thing and the whole thing for, you know, for a, a big brush stroke. So we can do something like this with the same brush stroke, but mixing two, three different colors in the same brush stroke like this, you know. And that's another uh, way to use a big brush like that, um, that holds lots of water. And impossible, it's not impossible, but it's harder to do with um, the novel ones with the, this kind of um, hair. Like this, see? Can you see the, the different colors and they are like- Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And the liner, I love the liner too. I have this liner here. Do you call as a product line in a, in a, in a, in a, in a production liner or? This um, is a rigger. For me, this is a rigger, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a rigger. So of, in German, the rigger. it's a schlepper. Schlepper. I love to use schlepper. the rigger to do anything, to do hey. brushes, um, um, trees and you know, yes, all kinds yes, 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 yes. kind of, you know, leaves and vegetables. Yeah. yeah, there we Perfect. go. Perfect. So, things like that with um, using speed on the brush stroke, and you have like um, a lighted brush stroke, like it's very, we, we get some light on the, on the brush yes. stroke. It's very yes. important. Um, so different kind of brush, different use, and I put all together in the in the landscape. That's my style. And well, bit. as I said, I am, you are the painter. I am only the brush maker, buddy. Yes, <laughs> I'm a painter. You're a brush maker, and you put the things together. And there you go. That's that's how it is. How it had should be. Let me get here again. We are almost the time to finish our meeting. Um, let's see if you have some questions from the people. What do you think? There we go, my background. And Erika, você tem alguma pergunta da, 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 do chat? Tem alguém quer compartilhar alguma coisa? Quer compartilhar mais alguma coisa? Olha, eu acho que o Ari mostrou, que o, desculpa, que o Herman mostrou muita coisa, mostrou o vario tip, que são os, as fibras misturadas, de dois tipos de fibras, mostrou trincha, 
foi muito legal a parte da produção. É... A impressão que eu tenho é que cada vez que eu vejo uma explicação dessa, eu aprendo mais um pouco. Porque é muita informação e muita coisa interessante. Eu acho que tá... foi um bom começo. Ótimo. Eu adorei. É. Não estou vendo é. pergunta. É, vamos ver se alguém tiver alguma pergunta. Pode fazer no chat. Alguma pergunta para o pro Herman. Herman, o um... People are like asking you stuff here and send you like greetings, send you like a big hug from Brazil. Uh, people are like saying that here in the chat, right? Thank you. Well, I hope it was I hope it was not too boring to to report you from our little brush material, brush making world here. And thank you for taking the time and thank you for being interested in what we are doing and for your support. It was really a pleasure to to do this. This is my first experience in something like that. And I hope, um, well, my team and myself um, gave you a, a good picture from uh, our Da Vinci Artist Brush Factory here in Nuremberg. Yeah, for sure. People are here. People here are very excited. Thank you a lot. And do you want to show your crew? Uh, Tabia, how are you? Tabia is holding the, 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 the cell phone and your Tabia will come around, so you see her. <laughs> and uh, you have uh, her together. <laughs> and we, I was having also my son Tobias in the team who, who uh, helped with the tone. So we nice. were the three of us to, <laughs> to try to give you a nice view of our factory here in Germany. Very nice. Thank you, Tabia. Thank you. What's your, what's your name again? The, your assistant, your, your son? Tobias. Tobias. Thank you very much for you to, to support, to do that beautiful ride through the, the, the factory. It was amazing. People are loving. And we thank you very much. Uh, we, are, we are here in Brazil, like, uh, using the product, testing the product for sure. Uh, we will give you, like, a, a feedback in the future. Um, that's a, a, a important beginning for you, for us too, as a watercolorist. And we thank you. We all thank you for um, to trust in the artists, to be together with the artists, listen to the artists. That's the most, most important to do. Um, exactly what they need. So uh, we learned a lot in in this uh, kind of visit. Uh, I learned a lot my first time in a uh, brush factory. And we are all uh, congrat con congratulations to all the, the factory, to all the company, Herman. I thank you very much. And I look forward to meet you personally, all, all of you. And thank you very much again. Huh? Yes, and we say obrigado, obrigado uh, a voi and a tutti or io non, non, I do not speak your language, but at least I can say obrigado and <laughs> best regards and bom dia to Brazil. Bye bye. Yes. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hello. Obrigada. Thank you. Feel and danke. Danke schön. Viele sehr. Danke schön. All is good, right? Yeah. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Muito bom. Um, legal, Erika. Então, uh, vamos finalizando aqui, gente. Uh -huh. Você, eu agradeço você também, Erika, por ter conduzido a gente nessa nessa viagem, ah, você como a responsável pela Da Vinci aqui, deixa eu colocar aqui o Spotlight, deixa eu mudar aqui. Ah... É bastante informação, né, Ari? Tem hora que é difícil escrever tudo, porque é bem rápido tudo que foi falado, mas é, no site da Da Vinci também, como ele falou no canal do YouTube da Da Vinci, vocês conseguem ver mais vídeos sobre a fábrica. Não é só essa oportunidade, então utilizem o canal do YouTube da Da Vinci, procura lá, YouTube, Da Vinci Brushes, da, da Vinci Defect Brushes, e aí vocês encontram o canal do YouTube, vocês vão conseguir ver vídeos de pincéis feitos, sendo feitos por máquinas, por exemplo, nós priorizamos mostrar os pincéis manuais, né, sendo feitos manualmente, mas alguns pincéis poderiam, podem ser feitos por máquinas, como a linha Junior, 
Então, no canal do YouTube vocês vão ver muito mais coisa. Sim, Érica. É, o mais interessante é como a, a filosofia de um fabricante, de um produto, né, é diferente quando você tem a, como missão, como objetivo, realmente fazer um bom produto e ouvir de nós, artistas, quais são as nossas necessidades, o que a gente precisa, uhum. o que a gente quer, é. fazer os pincéis dentro daquilo que a gente quer. Quando você tem um profissional de 28, 30, 20 anos, trabalhando e fazendo a mesma coisa, exatamente a mesma coisa, ah, os alemães eles estão um exemplo nisso para mim. Todos os produtos alemães eles têm um resultado é. ótimo, durabilidade, ah, justamente por causa dessa... dessa desse feedback, dessa o que eles têm por trás das cortinas, como que é, qual é a filosofia que eles aplicam para fazer aquilo que eles fazem, né? Isso para nós brasileiros é uma grande lição. Ah, eles não levam nada superficialmente, eles não eles não pegam para fazer na vida nada superficialmente. Ah, vamos falar, não existe de qualquer jeito, não existe o, o vamos é, é, fazer engembração. O produto alemão, o alemão faz muito isso. Então nós brasileiros temos muito muito que aprender com eles. Eu vejo que é ah, um povo e uma fábrica, a gente pode ver, super método, né? trabalhando tudo com um extremo método, ah, e a gente entra com a nossa criatividade. Então, é. unir aí, o artista brasileiro com a criatividade que tem, ah, e unir esse, esse produto que, que, que trazem isso, e, e trabalhando com método, eu acho que nós vamos longe, e a gente só tem que comemorar, Erika, então... Eu agradeço também a você que está fazendo essa frente, que está fazendo essa, que está trazendo isso, que está buscando isso, que está lá lutando por nós também. Que eu sei que na mesa de negociação ali ah, também vai ter puxa daqui, puxa de lá, o que que vai, o que que não vai. Eu sei que você consegue extrair bastante coisa dele lá para realmente viabilizar para nós. Então você também está de parabéns. Agradeço o nome dos aparelhistas aí que se a gente tem, se a gente tiver produto bom, pincel bom nas prateleiras também é graças ao seu trabalho, então eu te agradeço, uh, e obrigado por ter conduzido a gente aqui, ter dado o close caption, se você tiver mais alguma coisa que você ouviu de interessante não deu tempo de falar, quiser compartilhar aqui, fica à vontade. Eu acho uma coisa muito importante que ele falou foi a seguinte, nós somos uma empresa especializada em fazer pincel, então se você for observar a marca de pincel da Vinci, só faz pincel, e é isso que eu gosto muito no na Alemanha, uh, ela não é uma empresa de tinta que também faz pincel, ela é uma empresa de pincel, então toda a expertise, toda a energia, eles dormem e acordam pensando em como fazer o melhor pincel, isso a gente tem que pensar na hora que a gente está escolhendo a marca dos produtos que a gente está trabalhando, e o alemão tem muito isso, ele se mete a fazer uma coisa, ele faz muito bem, então ele vai fazer carro, ele faz uns, faz, as marcas de carros alemães são sensacionais, ele vai fazer papel, faz papel vai nem ele, nada, não precisa falar mais nada. Então, uh, tudo que o alemão se mete a fazer, vai fazer cerveja, faz cerveja muito bem. Isso é muito interessante da cultura alemã, a disciplina deles, e é isso aí, muita lição para a gente aprender. E vamos, vamos em frente, eu conto com vocês, agradeço o suporte, agradeço a, a, todo o retorno que a gente tem do consumidor brasileiro, só queremos melhorar o bom trabalho que a gente faz para dar 20 melhorar cada vez mais, né, né Ari? Sim. E para isso que nós estamos aqui. Sim. É, uh, e eu comemorei muito, Érica, que eu falo para você, quando a gente teve esse kit PTP, esse kit, um, esse kit dos três principais produtos da Aquarela, porque se juntaram três empresas alemãs, né? a Chimim, que é uma marca de pigmento que eu uso é. desde os 14 anos de idade, desde os anos 80, quando eu comecei com a agência de propaganda, eu uso a Chimim, então, é uma, uma marca que ela já vem assim comigo há, há muitos anos, a Da Vinci como pincel, né? a Ranimir também entrando no Brasil, apostando na, no aquarelista brasileiro. Então, eu acho que é aquilo. Isso daqui não é um espaço comercial, o Demo Livre não é um espaço comercial, mas eu dou total importância, Érica, para material, para as empresas que fazem materiais, porque a gente precisa disso. Nossa, a gente precisa disso. Ah, uhum. né? Então, essa, essa é a grande é, vitória, assim, a grande comemoração é essa, de a gente estar tá, é, conseguindo é. ter tudo num ciclo só. Érica, te agradeço enormemente. A gente já está aqui 11 horas da manhã. Ah, eu quero me despedir de vocês. Ah, deixa eu ver aqui se alguém ah, abriu o chat. 
para poder realmente a gente ver ali a turma compartilhar, a gente conversar com o pessoal, ver para eles conversarem entre eles. E é isso, gente. Mais uma demo, tá? Uh, fechando os três P's que a gente tinha de papel, pigmento e pincel. Vamos ver o que mais que a gente tem pela frente. Uh, semana que vem a gente retorna com a demo livre no mesmo horário, das duas às quatro da tarde. E eu vou ter um convidado super especial, um artista, tá? aquarelista. Me identifico muito, a gente se identifica muito com os trabalhos, porque ele também é paisagista, também pinta plené. Tem anos e anos de experiência, gente. Uh, não se constrói, uh, como diz o ditado, não se constrói Roma em um dia, né? Então, é outro aquarelista que já tem aí pintor, que já tem anos de mercado, anos na bagagem, uh, é um americano, tá? O nome dele é Andy Evansen, ele vai estar tá aqui na Demo Livre como convidado e a gente vai dividir um pouco do processo dele com a gente, tá? Então, vai pintar também, vamos pintar junto, vamos ver o que ele tem para tra trazer aqui. Uh, vai estar tá falando lá de Minnesota, nos Estados Unidos, e nosso horário normal das duas às quatro. Eu vou fazer o um anúncio e vou passar para vocês. Ah, vai estar tá gravado tá no YouTube. Para quem quiser assistir ah, depois de novo, vai ficar gravado. Vou fazer uma ediçãozinha, vai estar tá lá no canal. Depois eu mando o link para vocês poderem passar. Eu acho que esse link e essa esse dia de hoje foi... Realmente, para mim, foi uma aula. né A ideia não é fazer uma aula, mas essa visita foi uma aula. Foi uma aula em vários sentidos. Aula em, primeiro, como fazer pincel, que foi a primeira visita numa fábrica, não sabia como é que era que fazia, para vocês terem uma ideia. Uh, foi uma aula de filosofia, né, por trás do, do empreendedor, de um, de, um, de um cara que trabalha há quantos anos, mais de 30 anos, fazendo pincel, o amor que tem pela, 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 pelo trabalho, a paciência que eles têm da durabilidade do processo, né, do, do, aonde vai chegar em ter um produto uh, de qualidade, o que se faz para ter um produto de qualidade, não é brincadeira, não é feito de qualquer forma, Uh, o método que eles usam para isso, então acho que foi uma grande aula em vários sentidos, velho, e estou muito satisfeito, estou muito feliz com isso, é um prazer poder proporcionar isso, compartilhar isso, trazer para quem tem interesse, para quem está aqui, todo essa, esse universo que está por trás da pintura da aquarela, então é um grande prazer, gente. Eu agradeço vocês também por terem vindo, por estarem aqui, terem se disponibilizado mais cedo hoje, ah, e vamos lá, vamos em frente para as nossas próximas. Pessoal aqui mandando, então. Érica, turma ali também agradecendo. Gente, obrigado. Tá, valeu. Ah, obrigado, Ari. Um abraço para todos vocês. Obrigado, Érica. Obrigado para a turma toda. Deixa eu ver todo mundo aqui. Legal. Obrigado, gente. Vamos encerrando aqui. Tchau, tchau, tchau. Valeu. Valeu, gente. Valeu. Um abração. Ah, boa semana para todos. Próxima terça a gente se vê. Então, com o convidado aqui, um aquarelista americano, tem um excelente trabalho. Andy Evans vai estar aqui com a gente na demo. Um abraço, gente. Bom dia para vocês, boa semana. Se cuidem, se afastem de notícia ruim, pintem muito. Sexta-feira agora a gente tem ferramentas da pintura, tá? Para falar sobre gente, gente na aquarela, diferente de aquarela de gente. Então eu vou explicar um pouco sobre a diferença essas duas, essa, dessas duas abordagens, gente na aquarela, tá? Ou aquarela de gente, são duas coisas bem diferentes. Eu pinto gente para aquarela e vou divulgar, vou dividir um pouco com vocês com quem se inscrever no Ferramentas da Pintura de Sexta. Quem tiver interesse, entre em contato pelo e-mail, se inscreva e vamos estar junto lá estudando um pouco de gente para aquarela. Obrigado, gente. Até semana que vem. Vamos encerrando aqui. Um abraço em todos. Obrigado pela presença. Tchau, tchau. <música>